Hi guys, it's Elliot from tutorialedge.net and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at AsyncIO event loops. As always, the full text write-up of this tutorial can be found by website tutorialedge.net and I'll leave a link to this tutorial in the description below. The main component of any AsyncIO based Python program has to be the underlying event loop. Within this event loop we can register, execute and cancel calls, launch sub-processes and the associated transports for communication with an external program, and delegate costly function calls to a pool of threads. Essentially, all an event loop does is wait for events to happen before matching each event to a function that we have explicitly matched with said type of event. A good example of this would be a simple web server. Say we have an endpoint on our server that serves our website, which features a multitude of different pages. Our event loop essentially listens for requests to be made and then matches each of these requests to the associated web page. So let's take a quick look at how you can define a very simple event loop based program. So to get it started, we're gonna to have to import the async IO library. We'll then define a very simple async coroutine. So async def my coroutine. And within this, we're just simply gonna print out my coroutine. Next, we want to instantiate our loop, and we can do that using asyncio's get event loop function. So loop equals asyncio dot get event loop. And finally, we want to do a try finally, and within the try body, we want to do loop run until complete, passing in our my coroutine. And in our finally block, we want to close our loop. So that's all it takes. So let's try running that. So Python 3.6, and I've called this file test.py. As you can see, it successfully starts up our event loop. It then calls my coroutine and runs this coroutine until it's complete before it then shuts down our event loop. So this was one nice and quick sample to get you up and running. But it should be noted that we have a number of options for running our event loops. We can either call run forever, which will subsequently run our event loop until the stop function is called, or we can call run until complete and pass in the coroutines that we wish to execute, as we have done here. So let's now have a look at the alternative way of starting up your event loop. We're gonna start again. We're gonna take out this bit of code and what we're going to want to do is create a try, accept, and finally. So the accept will take in a keyboard interrupt and it will simply pass. And finally, we're going to close our loop. So closing loop and loop.close. So within here, this is where it gets interesting. So we're going to want to call asyncio.ensure future and then pass in my coroutine. And finally, we want to call loop.run forever. And if we try run this now, you'll see that our program runs indefinitely, but it only calls our my coroutine print function once. So in order to fix that, we can come back into our my coroutine and simply add a while true loop. And just to ensure that it doesn't do it too quickly, we're going to add an asyncio.sleep call just for one second. So again, when we run this, you should see that every one second, my coroutine is then printed to our console. Perfect. So what happens if we wanted to run multiple core routines indefinitely in parallel? Well, you can do that by creating both your core routines. So async def second core routine. And again, we're going to have the while true format with await async io dot sleep and second core routine. So all we have to do is add another call to asyncio.ensureFuture and pass in second coroutine. 
And if you come into our console and try running that again, you'll see that both our coroutines are executed in parallel every one second. So hopefully this tutorial gave you a better indication as to how you can work with event loops in AsyncIO. And if you found this tutorial useful, then please leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more concurrency and Python based tutorials.